E3 is back. I actually covered last week that E3 was coming back in wake of some controversy that potentially uh, the ESA might be charging uh, consumers for uh, exclusive access to certain things. I guess uh, GameIndustry.biz and other places were kind of floating out there that emails had gone out to media to kind of gauge interest in potentially having a gated approach to E3. Uh, th- basically, where anyone could pay to get full access to demos and all that, but uh, the ESA kind of backed off on that, and then publicly, you know, officially, the only public statement from them at the time was, uh, no, we're going to make everything free for everyone. Although it's interesting because apparently there might be exclusive media, quote unquote, media days. I would assume this is where media uh, can see presentations. Like, I I don't know. It, it, it's interesting because we now know that Nintendo is partaking in E3. That's kind of the big news for us and, and our channel. But other companies are as well. Xbox, etc. I've actually talked about how I already knew that Xbox was going to be at E3, even if you guys didn't because there wasn't a public announcement for it. Uh, but I, I, the, what's interesting here is who's at E3, who's not at E3, and, and what exactly is going to happen. So here's the official E3 website. It says, you're in control, the electronic entertainment experience, which, by the way, was the leaked name for what E3 is going to be called this year because it's not an expo because there's nothing happening in person. Uh, it's all online. So it begins on June 12th. It runs through June 15th. There's not really um, much additional information here, but we'll, we'll go over what's on the website, and then we'll go over uh, everything else that's been reported. Uh, Evolutionary Access E3 2021 is embracing the future and showcasing the video game industry with all virtual event that will engage everyone everywhere. It's designed for you. There'll be live press conferences and a four-day long video stream. E3 2021's virtual format gives you unprecedented access to premier video game industry event uh, wherever you are. E3 2021 is coming to you. This year's event will be reimagined and hyper-engaged digital experience, paving the way for so much more in 2022 and beyond. And then you can obviously... Um, you know, try to, uh, I guess this is probably where you could sign up for notifications on stuff. Maybe even like when it says attendee type, you know, maybe even attempt to get that media access that supposedly might exist. I'm, I don't know if this is just for game demos. I'm not exactly sure what the media access is for. I don't know if you can access to the press conferences early. Uh, but let's talk about that in a moment because we have additional information here over on Nintendo Life. Um, E3 2021 is not only dated, we now know Nintendo, Xbox, Capcom, and more are all confirmed. No, folks, Sony is dipping out of E3 yet again. Not really a surprise. Sony hasn't participated in E3 in a couple of years, uh, like two or three years at this point. Last year, there wasn't one. So uh, I'm not really surprised that they're not there. Um, It would have been nice to see Sony come back uh, just to really solidify this as a whole industry event. Uh, And there's some other notable companies out there as well, or at least not there for their own individual press conferences. doesn't mean they won't have a presence at E3. So, the Entertainment and Software Association has announced its plans for this year's E3 event, revealing that several major publishers are already on board, including Nintendo. A reimagined all-virtual version of E3 will take place on Saturday. That's right, it starts on a Saturday, the 12th to Tuesday, June 15th. The ESA says that developers will be showcasing their latest news and games directly to fans around the world, and that this content, presumably meaning live streams and the like, will be available to everyone for free. As for the publishers that have already signed up, here's the full list. We have Nintendo, Xbox, Capcom, Konami, Ubisoft, Take-Two Interactive, Warner Bros. Media, and Koch Media. That's all. That's a really good list. That's a really, that's a really solid list. Um, what's notable here as well is you guys remember the original idea behind E3 this year was there was going to be like a two or three hour time slot for platform holders at the beginning of each day. Uh, and I don't know if that's still the plan at this point, but if it is, think about it. Nintendo could kick off one of those E3 days, maybe even the first E3 day, although I think Xbox might try to jump on that. Uh, but Nintendo's going to kick off probably one of those days uh, and potentially be doing it for two to three hours. Now, they're not going to have a two to three hour direct. We, we can kind of um, not get our hype so high that, oh my god, Nintendo's going to have a three hour Nintendo direct for E3. Not, it's, it might be an hour. It's possible that they have had ones come close to that. So it could be an hour uh, at most. But I think the other couple hours will be kind of like their Nintendo Treehouse style thing. Uh, instead of it being an all day thing, they'll just do, uh, you know, hey, we're going to we're going to stream um, developer interviews and uh, us playing the games and all that jazz. I, I think that's something they might take advantage of, um, maybe even throughout the event. Now, Nintendo obviously might have additional streams on their own channels, 
uh, that could continue the, the, the Treehouse Live we come accustomed to and just use the E3 ESA streams to kind of signal boost themselves, which is not a horrible idea. Uh, so, yeah, anyways, uh, so that's what's happening there. Now, um, the president and CEO of ESA has shared the following in a press release. For more than two decades, E3 has been the premier venue to showcase the best that the video game industry has to offer while uniting the world through games. We are evolving this year's E3 to a more inclusive event, but we'll still look to excite fans of major reveals and insider opportunities that make this event the indispensable center stage for video games. Uh, and this is just kind of their official tweet on this. Uh, while E3 2021 will be an online-only event, the ESA hopes to return to a physical setting for 2022. That's not a surprise, of course. Um, they they want to get back to the in-person event. One, because it's it's profitable for the ESA. Uh, and two, I, I look, full disclosure, I've gone to E3. I've gone both as media, an official media badge. I've also gone as just a gamer with a gamer badge. Now, granted, I was going there uh, representing my YouTube channel. So I was actually there to do work within the limitations of the gamer badge, which as a media member who has to get into uh, these events with a gamer badge, uh, you're very limited. I can't bring my camera equipment in. I don't tripods. I can't have special microphones or any of that jazz. You can have your phone. Um, they even limit some of the gimbal stuff with that, but you can have a phone. So like a lot of the footage will be done with a phone. Uh, sometimes there are certain security guards that'll let you bring your camera in, even though you're not supposed to, uh, like you could bring in like a normal, like disposable camera, but you're not supposed to bring in like an actual video. It's, it's a whole mess of things that for some reason, I, I think they're just trying to declutter uh, the E3 show floor. So I, I suppose really what I want to see them do is not l lift the limitations on gamer badges. I want to see them lift the limitations on what it takes to become a media member, YouTubers in particular, and maybe E3 will learn this year. YouTubers in particular are really screwed. Um, to give you an idea, my website, NintendoPrime.com, which I do have and I do update here and there, uh, that website, you know, if it only gets like 10,000 views a month, like we're just talking per month, not per day, per month. Uh, so if I get 10,000 views per month, I could qualify for a media badge. But on YouTube, each of my videos needs to get 50,000 views each, and my channel has to have 100,000 subscribers. That's a tall ask, uh, and that's showing some clear bias to traditional media. Uh, so anyways, back in the day at E3 2016, I got to go with a media press badge for ZeldaInformer.com at the time, uh, and that was that was nice. Uh, you got early access to the show floor, um, so you got a, a chance to basically play you know, one or two demos that, uh, before the crowd comes in. Uh, and yeah, it, it was cool. And plus that was a really cool E3 for Zelda fans in particular, like myself, because obviously that was Breath of the Wild and man, I played the hell out of that demo. Uh, beyond that, uh, I've had the gamer pass and, and Hey, I still got a lot of coverage on you guys have seen it over the years. I do my best to get as much coverage as I can, as much, uh, impressions of games as I can, as much footage of games as I can. Uh, and you guys seem to really, really appreciate it. V uh, viewership around E3 is always really, really nice. You know, we're not talking astronomical, you know, we have a, a video now and then blow up to like over a hundred thousand views, but, um, usually it's, you know, just 10 K 15 K. Uh, but that's fine because I like that coverage. It, it sets us apart from other YouTubers in my space anyways that don't really cover it in my way even like bigger youtubers like I know uh, wolf then goes to e3 He doesn't do the kind of coverage of e3 that that I do so um, I really like my coverage And uh, I'm glad to see e3 is coming back. So what are what are my plans for e3? Obviously, we'll be Probably live streaming the entire event and reacting to it. Yes the entire event not just Nintendo We cover everything here. So uh, we'll be live streaming the entire event for four days uh, it's going to be pretty intense on my end because I haven't covered an E3 from at home in a while. Now, I've done the live streams and, and all that, but it usually it's from the hotel room when I'm in L.A. Uh, I'll be at home. So it gets a little hectic with the kids and my everyday life uh, not being, you know, perfectly set. Uh, probably some frustrations with my fiance as I'm at home uh, working for like 12 hours a day. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Maybe I'll, I'll step aside and let the stream just kind of run while I, I do lunch breaks and all that jazz. But, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be an intense four days. Uh, but E3 is every single time. It's always intense, uh, whether you're at, at, at it or at home covering it. So I uh, look forward to lots and lots and lots of live streams, lots of reactions, lots of impressions uh, or opinions. It, it won't be hands-on impressions. It'll just be uh, opinions from the outside looking in unless – the gods bless me and decide to allow me to actually play some of the demos that supposedly might be available to media. Uh, 
please ESA consider me. Uh, I do coverage of your event every single year. I'm one of the few people out there that thinks E3 is still relevant. Uh, well, maybe after last summer, everyone thinks E3 is still relevant. Uh, so anyways, as for Nintendo, we now know, uh, since Nintendo's participating in this, we can basically say, all right, sometime between June 12th and June 15th, we don't know the exact date, it will be announced, there is going to be essentially a major Nintendo Direct, maybe the biggest Nintendo Direct of the year. So we now know that. So that kind of puts a damper on, do we really expect a Direct in April? Do we really expect a Direct in May? I mean, there might be a Game Direct, like individual Game Direct for something like Mario Golf, Super Rush, you know, there might be a 25th anniversary, more Pokemon news. Um, but, I mean, here's the thing. E3's happening. Nintendo's there. We're getting the 35th anniversary blowout at during E3. 35th anniversary of Zelda blowout during E3. Just, just book it. I know I'm not the first person to make that prediction, but now that we know for sure, 35th anniversary, Zelda, E3, book it. All right, folks. I am Nintendo Robo Dance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.